So the end of this is now in sight. Only two games left, and these two actually share a bit of a connection, mainly being the last two in this Dark Matter trilogy thing I mentioned back in Dreamland 2. And while I'll take a guess most of you Kirby fans are at least familiar with 64, Dreamland 3 is often overlooked by a lot of people trying the series out. Is it because of the game itself? I think it has more to do with the time this game came out. 1997, basically a year after the N64 launched and 3D gaming was the new craze. Kinda like how the adventure situation was, but I think it's a more detriment to the title sales of this game. So, did it deserve to be forgotten, or was this just a case of wrong place, wrong time? Only one way to find out, so let's get into it. So after being beaten last game, Dark Matter isn't exactly in a good mood and attempts to take over Dreamland again, so Kirby and his armada of animals go out to stop him, you know the drill by now, let's move on. So Dreamland 3 marks a big first for the series, the dynamic art style. See, the other games were cartoony and weren't able to colorful, but Dreamland 3 takes a step above by making the entire aesthetic look like a drawn out crayon style and the result is one fantastic looking game that still looks great to this day. Honestly, it looks miles better than Superstar for me, and is more in line with other Super Nintendo games I feel. Everything just has a distinct pop to it that makes everything on screen work together and the game is just a joy to look at. Except when the game flashes like crazy after beating a boss, that kinda hurts to look at. Backgrounds in this game I think add a lot to the atmosphere of each level and they make each world feel distinct from each other unlike Dreamland 2. Not to mention the animations look great for the system and a lot more fluent than previous games. Soundtrack is pretty good as per usual old Kirby, in particular the gourmet race this time. Wow, I was not expecting it to be that good. Sadly, that's probably one of the only tracks I can remember off the top of my head. It's still good, it's just I can't really remember it outside of the game. And with that done, let's move on to gameplay. So Dreamland 3 returns somewhat back to the Dreamland 2 formula, where there's a smaller amount of abilities, the return of the animal buddies, and getting to the goal, but there are some key differences. For one, there is a co-op option returning from Superstar in the form of Gooey, who was... Kind of an animal buddy in Dreamland 2. He healed you for one point and that was it. He was mostly there as a joke. But here, a second player can control him, but he can't do much honestly. And with the Wii mode, I just kept summoning him all the time when I didn't want to. So away, vile demon! Next is the new power broom, which appears only here for years until Star Allies and Kirby dusts with it. Animal buddies return here such as Rick, Koo, and Kine, each with a few new changes, such as Kine not slowing down when he's out of water this time, but three more animal buddies have been added. Nago, who lets you perform a triple jump with a little bit of speed, Pitch, who can slow you down for descent, and my favorite of the new three, Choo Choo, who can cling onto the ceiling. And each of them with powers can morph Kirby into new abilities, so now there is technically 56 different ability combinations to choose from. That's... Kind of insane. And I do mean choose this time, because when you get an animal buddy, they really have two or more of them in a room, and you pick the one you like the most out of them. But the biggest change to Dreamland 3 is the new mission style of gameplay. Remember those rainbow drops from Dreamland 2? Well, their successor is here, and they're here with a vengeance. Because each world has more levels in them, and every single one of them has a heart star you need to collect. Yes. The name Heart Star is really dumb, I know. You need to perform some kind of action in a level in order to get the MacGuffin at the end. Basically, when you enter a room and you hear this sound, that's when you know your room has a task, and it's up to you to figure it out and claim your prize. And once again, you need every single one of them in order to reach the true final boss. And that's about it gameplay-wise for the third Dreamland. So what does this second round at the Animal Buddies get right? So the good in Dreamland 3, well first thing I want to say I love the style that the game has with the crayon look and it makes it stand out from every other game in the franchise, in a good way of course. But I think more than any other game in the marathon, the cuteness is just oozing everywhere. From everything just being so energetic and happy, to the Waddle Dees just doing little things that give each level its own charm, or how Kirby's body just gets morphed into a bundle of joy with each of the animal transformations. I think this is the game where Kirby's modern day cuteness really came from. 
And you know, kudos for making some big improvements from Dreamland 2. For one, I actually want to use the animal buddies a lot more. Sure, they don't give you a health boost this time, but I think the level design is built more with them in mind, so it makes it more worthwhile to use them. And with multiple animal buddies being available at once, you're given more freedom to play the way you want, which I appreciate. Plus, with these heart stars, while there's a lot more of them than the rainbow drops in 2, I feel like they're a lot easier to understand than the last few of them in 2. Plus, it's usually the focus of the level, so it doesn't feel as tacked on as last time. But unfortunately, this game has a lot of problems to iron out. So, on to those missions. Well, they are easier to understand than, say, the last few in Dreamland 2. It still feels like a cheap way to extend gameplay time, if you ask me. And there's no difference between getting one heart star and getting the last one. You don't get anything for them besides the final boss of all of them. And there's still a lot of them you're just going to be doing trial and error for, as you'll only know the solution by the end and need to replay the entire level. Such as the first level in World 4, where you need Koo and Broom at the very end of the level and need to dust off these flowers. Thing is, not only is this place at the very end of the level, but you need to make sure you don't hold the button down for too long or bump into a flower because then you kill it and then you have to restart the mission all over again. It's either that or the process takes very long to do and even if you miss one part you have to redo everything. The biggest offender being 3-6 which is by far the longest and toughest mission in the game where you need to go on multiple paths and find parts to make a rob. It requires a lot of back and forth and a lot of do or die situations such as going to this rock here to open up this path or climbing up this tower only to climb back down and... Just like Dreamland 2, there are scrolling sections that have insta-death, and now that I think about it, I think it's even worse this time. Especially on this screen right here. Okay, I'm just gonna go into the screen here and- oh, I died. Well, maybe if I just go onto the screen and- okay, I died. Okay, maybe if I make my way to the- well. Seriously, this just feels dumb and it does nothing but get in the way of the pacing. All it does is cause you to die and start that screen all over again. And if you were low on lives here, say in like 3-6, and you win for that last piece and get a game over, you gotta do all of that again. Though to be fair, in a lot of cases you can speed right back to where you were, but that's only because the level design is so... bare. Most of them are seriously just a straight line that you can fly over, and as such, it's probably the weakest level design in the series yet. I really can't tell you much about the individual levels this time because they all seem to blend together. The only thing separating them are the missions and that's it. So honestly, you should go for 100%, otherwise, you're really ripping yourself off. Now I'm mostly talking about missions because those are the big changes compared to Dreamland 2. And even though there are a lot of changes, it just kind of falls into the same feeling I had as Dreamland 2, which overall for me was very... meh. Overall, Dreamland 3 is alright, but it's really polarizing playing it. One minute, I'm having a great time with its charm, presentation, and just going through missions as per usual, but then you hit a roadblock and need to replay a mission about 40 minutes or so to get it exactly right, and that's where all the fun gets sucked out. But looking back, I honestly can't say much stood out to me. I kind of just lump it into the same area as Dreamland 2 but I can only really recommend it to a Kirby fan. But I'd stay away if you're not into the series yet, as it's not a very good introduction. And if you are planning to try the game out, go for 100%, because with this kind of level design, there's no real point in speeding through it. And I would have a guide on standby just in case for those roadblock missions. It frustrates me because I can see all the improvements over Dreamland 2, and there are steps in the right direction, but for every step forward, it feels like there's two steps back. And that isn't a great feeling to have while playing. But in all, not bad, but not memorable either. Just kind of sits there, without doing much that makes me want to go back for another round. Oh my god, there's only one more game left! It's actually gonna get done! Look, I love Kirby, but it's time to wrap this thing up with Kirby 64, the Crystal Shards, next time. So until then, see you then.